Avery. I'm extremely honored to have the town of Orangeville Mayor Sandy Brown join us today. Thank you, Mayor Brown, for joining us. Um, I know you're very, very busy, so we do appreciate your time. Yes, well, um, I'm joining you from Stately Brown Manor today. <laughs> as I am joining you from the Avery Manor as well. <laughs> very nice. Good to see you, yeah. Tina. Yeah. It's good to see you. How, how are you doing? Yeah, fine. I mean, um, it's certainly, um, you know, unprecedented, uh, uncharted waters. You know, nobody had any indication uh, six weeks ago that th this was going to turn into what, what it has. Um, however, um, I think the community is is handling it. Uh, it's very uh, frustrating for a lot of people uh, being, nobody likes to be told what to do. <laughs> and, uh, but really, it's it's the uh, the invisible enemy that we have to try and um, stop from being passed on, and th this is what I think everybody's getting this now. That uh, although you may feel well, you may still be positive, uh, you know, um, and and carry the virus. And th there's been multiple episodes of this spreading in this community manner that we've seen in other countries, and and now it, it's happening here. So. The government's trying to, you know, give us very strong language about staying at home, the, the more senior levels of government. And, of course, we're trying to enforce it here as best we can and, and uh, cooperate with the provincial and federal government um, with those, you know, stay at home, stay at home advice. And I think, you know, I, I was out this morning. I had to uh, do a couple things at town hall this morning, and I, I think... You know, for a uh, you know for a, a, a weekday as it is today, um, it's remarkable how few people are out there. So I think most people are understanding that we 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 need to stay home and to uh, you know get through this uh, this virus peak and um, hopefully get back to normal as quickly as possible. Absolutely. And I think um, we're an amazing community. And I've said this several times before, and we will get to the other side. And the goal is for everyone to follow these rules and regulations um, as, as hard and difficult as some people may find them so that we can get to that other side and have everybody safe, healthy um, and businesses um, open again to thrive and do everything that we need them to do um, when when all of this is said and done. So with that big, being said, a big party at the big party at the Avery House when it's all said and done. <laughs> Uh, sure, I'll just slip them your address and I'll... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not a problem at all. So I know that a couple of weeks ago, the town declared a state of emergency. And I was just hoping that you could explain to us what that means and what it means for the residents and how it works. Well, you know, it's interesting. You know, through that whole period, probably the week before we declared it, we saw a number of municipalities... Um, make that declaration, including New Market, Aurora, Caledon. And, um, you know, the advice that I was getting was that the province had already declared a state of an emergency and that um, we had already um, sort of evoked our emergency management um, uh, center here in Dufferin County. And the town also was opening its um, emergency operations center without the declaration of emergency. Um, so it's, you know, there's a, there's a, there was a bit of a, a political pressure, I think, to do that and to, to declare that state of emergency. In actual fact, it, it gives the mayor a, a, a little bit more power to make decisions if quick decisions need to be made in the event that council can't be pulled together for a meeting. Um, however, you know, we haven't, got to that point where we needed to uh, make any kind of quick decisions that, that wouldn't have um, council involvement. So I think as, as it stands right now, we are, um, we're able to make, make quick decisions if we have to, but uh, um, you know, the state of emergency is just to, to let everybody know this is a serious matter. Um, we're, um, you know, supporting the province in this in their declaration and supporting the surround other surrounding municipalities but really it's um it's status quo in terms of how the town is operating right now we're you know our town staff our senior managers are all um, meeting on a daily basis to uh 
you know, the, the, the news has been coming out fast and furious as you're, as you know, and, um, we're, we're trying to, to, um, accept and work with all the federal and provincial uh, mandates that are coming down to, to us. Um, all of the town facilities are closed now. Um, so it's, it's a matter now of trying to get, um, uh, our workforce, uh, working from home and uh, keeping folks as busy as possible. There were some layoffs, of course, on, on Friday of uh, part-time and casual workers. Um, but uh, we're trying to keep all the essential services going. Obviously, water, wastewater, roads department, public works are all uh, working normally. And uh, at, at Town Hall, the administrative staff is trying to um, talk to any property tax, uh, you know, uh, anybody that needs help on uh, on a payment structure for property taxes. Uh, Orangeville Hydro is working with uh, our residents regarding hydro and water. Um, so I guess we're doing the best we can. It's just, you know, it's very unusual times. Um, I, I know that there's some um, wonderful online ways that people can still stay um, part of the community or, or feel and, and, and possibly lift, create some joy and some positive feelings. So why don't we talk a little bit about that um, sure. with regards to what people can do online through the town um, in this situation right now. Well, um, last Friday, I had a, a coffee chat with Darla Fraser, who's the CEO of our public library system. And the public library, for instance, has got a lot of online offerings that, um, people can access and if you don't have a library card you can get a virtual library card by going to the Orangeville Library uh, website and applying for one it uh, I think within 24 hours you will have a virtual card which gives you access to um, I think uh, periodicals magazines newspapers from over a hundred countries and over 60 languages so that in itself is a, an amazing uh, resource and lots of ebooks, lots of educational material. So children staying home, um, looking for interesting things to do rather than play Call of Duty, um, can uh, <laughs> can um, you know, do a deep dive. Things like um, access to an Ancestry.ca. If you want to do a genealogical search on your family, lots of very interesting things available through through the library. So I know that's. That's one town resource that uh, uh, they've seen a, a real bump in business um, on that. And it's, um, it's an under um, advertised resource that the town has and people uh, should take advantage of it. I think so. I think, I think um, everybody's looking for different things. We all don't want to be sitting in front of our TVs day after day, day after day. And I always stress with people, you know, watch the news, but yes, you know, limit to what you're watching because it can be overwhelming and it can, it can mm -hmm. cause feelings that you know, makes people anxious. And uh, there's so many other things you can do. And I actually did see that I believe um, Shannon from the library has been doing daily readings or um, with her daughter yeah. and all mm -hmm. these wonderful books that you can go online and check out on YouTube. So you want to make sure that you're definitely doing that as well. Story time mm -hmm. is great. It's, it's, uh, they're doing a wonderful job. Right. We, we've also had um, a couple of town hall meetings with uh, some of the, the local higher um, uh, government representatives, uh, both provincial and federal representatives. We, we had a, a town hall to talk about small businesses and how they can weather the storm. We, and that's available on YouTube. We also have uh, a town hall about the financial programs that the various levels of government are offering. Um, to residents and how to access them. So um, MP Kyle Seaback and MPP Sylvia Jones took part in that as well as County Warden uh, Darren White. And uh, so we, but again, all of these um, programs are available through, um, I think CRA is, is, uh, is how you register for some of the federal programs, the um, Ontario.ca and Sylvia Jones website. And Kyle Seaback's got a wonderful uh, uh, website with a lot of information on it, as do the county and the town. There are copious amounts of information about programs and, uh, you know, health issues, too, and how, how, what it means to, to isolate yourself and, uh, 
and to uh, use proper hygiene. All very important information and all very necessary uh, these days for sure. So we do have a couple minutes left and I wanted to touch base on something that I think um, weighs on my mind on occasion. Um, and that's, um, there is a rule about gatherings of five people and less. Um, and I'm just wondering if, if residents do see or happen to see groups of people, because as the weather gets nicer, people are going to want to be outside. And sometimes you think, well, maybe we're not that bad, or maybe we should give this a try. So what do people do if you see it? Like, or, or what should we do if well, we see gathering? If, if you see what you consider an unlawful gathering, um, what you need to do is, is um, um, call the, non-emergency number of Orangeville Police Service, which is 519-941-2522, and they will respond to those calls, and they've been doing that. In fact, I think over the weekend, I believe it was a door-to-door -door salesman was uh, fined, you know, and, and that's, <laughs> I don't know what was going through that person's mind, but uh, Going door to door through a neighborhood at this moment in in history is not um, a very smart thing to be doing. So, they were they were fined a significant amount of money. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 the uh, Orangeville Police Service non emergency number again five one nine nine four one two five two two. Um, so how are you spending your time? I know you're a very very busy man, um, but how are you spending your time when you're not doing town? <laughs> well, um, I, I like uh, many other people, I found some of these uh, programs on Netflix. Um, I've been uh, watching Ozark lately, which I've been uh, going through that uh, series. Um, I've been reading as well. Um, but a good eight to 10 hours of my day every day has been uh, on uh, either being in the office or um, it, doing some interviews like this and talking to town staff about issues that are continuing to percolate at, uh, at town hall. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I have no doubt um, that this is keeping you extreme, probably busier than it was before all of this happened. And everyone has uh, these, these talks about this home time and what's going on. And there are many people that are much busier now. And we do appreciate all the time that you are spending uh, working on the issues and all of these different things that are coming up with the council. Um, and I appreciate you very much for giving us this time today. I know you're extremely busy um, and hopefully we can have you back up to do an update uh, very soon as well of as course. things progress. Of course. Well, thanks, Tina. And I know uh, there's a lot of uh, anxiety in, uh, out there right now. I think, uh, you know, the provincial and federal governments, I think, have done a very good job of, uh, of tackling this problem. Um, I think it's now to the point where money is is starting to filter out to, to people and uh, to uh, erase that anxiety of whether they have a roof over their head and food in their belly. That's those are the kind of base important things that we have to worry about. And people like Heather Hayes of the food bank and others that are helping to distribute food to those in need are doing a wonderful job. So I think um, as a community, we're going to be strong. We're going to get through this and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have a big celebration sometime soon. Uh, to get uh, back to normal. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Brown, for joining me. And uh, everybody out there, you stay safe and healthy. And until next time, we'll see you then. And, and to you as well. All the best. Thanks, Tina. Bye-bye now. Just let's start off by talking about how uh, COVID-19 has been affecting the businesses here in Orangeville. That's a very loaded question. Every business is having a different experience, um, but I would say that every business is having challenges. Um, some businesses have had, have had to close completely, like hairdressers, um, massage therapy, um, businesses you know that are doing lashes and you know any kind of aesthetics that they've all had to close. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some service businesses are able to um, to stay open depending on the kind of service business they're doing. They're able to offer some stuff online. It's it's really a whole mixed bag of um, you know depending on what kind of business they are, but it's challenging and for everybody. I think so, and I think I think we live um, fluidly in day to day and sometimes hour to hour depending on what's happening 
um, in town and the regulations that are put on us by the town, by the by the federal government, by the provincial government. Um, we're kind of all working um, together to try to make this as best as we possibly can because we've never seen anything like this before. So it's definitely um, not something anybody could have expected or even thought out or had a plan B for, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and from one minute to the next, like you said, there are changes happening, um, changes that the government is is mandating, um, and changes from one day to the next that businesses are feeling like they closed, but now they feel like they're more capable of, of doing whatever they need to do safely um, so they can maintain public safety, public social distancing, all of that sort of stuff. And so now they're reopening in some capacity. For example, restaurants are doing that. So some restaurants closed completely um, when this, uh, when everything started, because they felt mm -hmm. that were it was. I think they thought that perhaps it was only going to be for a few weeks, and just thought it was just safer to close altogether. Um, but since then, they've had some opportunities to really look at their processes to find out how they can do things safely, keep the the, the public safety in the forefront, um, and now are reopening to offer takeout or delivery services. So each business is looking at what's happening from day to day and changing their business model to suit whatever they can manage to do at that given at that given time so right and when we're not talking about restaurants and the ability to still be able to have takeout and curbside pickup and that sort of thing um i would imagine that some businesses are looking for online models now and looking at how maybe they could sell their products online and still get their their products out to people and so that they can sustain what's happening right now in order to be there when this when we get on the flip side yeah absolutely we've seen a big uptake in our business on our small business owners downtown um, who are now selling their products online or selling their products through some sort of augmented online process. So even if it's just, you know, messaging the business owners directly asking for, you know, hey, can you deliver such and such a product? Um, a lot of businesses were doing curbside pickup up until the recent closures, but now it's delivery only. So um, yeah, a lot of businesses have adapted to that and they're doing they're doing okay. Um, certainly, you know, it's, it's not like it was before. Um, and I, and I think they appreciate every single order that they're getting at this point. So supporting our local businesses is going to be so important. And I really hope that this is a wake up call to all of us to understand that, you know, shopping on, you know, online at Amazon is okay for some things, but supporting your local businesses on a day to day basis is essential for the health of our, our, our economic health in our community. Absolutely. And as a community, we need to pull together. I completely agree with what you're saying is um, it is great that you can and have always been able to order things from Amazon and people look for things that way. But maybe when you're looking, well, what I'm going to say to the viewers are maybe when you're looking for something, maybe you want to adapt maybe what you're looking for to something that can actually support these local businesses so that when we do get through this and we will get through this, um, when we do get through it, that all of those businesses are still here and still viable. It's going to take some time for everybody to recover from what's going on. But the more we can do to help um, and support um, I think is is crucial to um, our community as a whole, and we have such an amazing community for sure. Yeah, we absolutely do. We are absolutely we are spoiled um, in Orangeville because we have a business community that is very socially supportive. We have so many uh, businesses that are doing so much to help our community right now, um, and I cannot thank them enough for w when they are being so challenged right now, but yet still doing so much. Um, for the community as and when they can. It's really quite astounding. So I'm very proud of that. So let's talk about some of the businesses that are still open um, on the main street in, and on Broadway. Um, and there are so many other businesses that are not situated right on Broadway, but um, are still working hard to keep their businesses open as well. And we don't want to forget about them as well um, right. as they are part of our community. So let's talk about some of the businesses and some of the um, BIA members that maybe you could give us some information on about how they're, how they're, out there, how they can help us and how we can help them. Right. So um, as we already alluded to, we were talking about the restaurants um, and how they are, a, a lot of the restaurants are open for takeout and delivery services. So simply by ordering takeout once or twice a week, if you can afford that yourself, that would be amazing. And those businesses would very much appreciate your, uh, your patronage. 
So a list of those businesses is available on the downtownorangeville.ca um, website. Um, if you click on the open for business tab, you'll see a list of restaurants there. You'll also see a list of service businesses and, um, and our retail businesses and, and also businesses that are outside of the downtown area, outside of the BIA area, because as much as we're here to support our downtown businesses, we also understand that other small businesses are really struggling and we wanted to do our little bit to support them too. So we do have a list of outside businesses that are open right now and trying to serve. So besides restaurants, which are kind of the obvious choice and people, most people know that, that, that restaurants are open and serving people for the most part. Um, we also have yoga studios that are offering online yoga classes. Um, we have, um, accountants and bookkeepers that are still working from home and doing all that work. We have some um, businesses that are offering kind of consulting services for um, healthcare, and they're doing that via Skype or Zoom or whatever online service um, that they um, are are using at the moment. Um, so businesses are getting really, really creative in how they're delivering mm -hmm. their services. It's really quite something. I've been very impressed with how, how they've all adapted in some way, shape or form. And even if that means closing their business altogether because they think that's the healthy thing for themselves, their families in our community. And I have to applaud those businesses too. And how can we support the businesses that are closed right now, but we don't want to go away? Well, that's the, that's the big $10,000 question. I think as soon as they open again, we all need to flock to them. That is absolutely for sure. Um, we hope that um, some of those businesses are going to be selling um, gift certificates, and we're hoping to put something together so um, it, there's an easy portal for um, local people to just like a kind of a one-stop shop for gift certificates. All we ask is that you wait for a while before you use those gift certificates if that's what you're doing um, and if that's your way of supporting local businesses. Buy them now. But as soon as they reopen, that's not the time to use them. Wait until, you know, maybe four months or six months or even nine months or a year from now before you actually use them because that's when the businesses will be hopefully getting back on their feet and able to, uh, to support those gift certificates without it being a drain on their resources. I think that's a wonderful point. And I think I just, I mean, I know it's absolutely crazy. We're just getting into spring. The, the nice weather's just starting to get here. But if you have the resources and you're able to buy gift certificates, it's a great time to think about birthday gifts for later on in the season. Even Christmas presents, putting away gift cards for those people so that once the Christmas comes and hopefully all of this is all said and done and we're all, we're all back to normal, um, then giving those as a gift and then they'd be used in the following year, I think is a, is a great idea for people to support businesses in, in any way that they can. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great point. Um, kind of looking ahead to your gift giving season, um, you know, like you said, birthdays in the fall, Christmas, that sort of thing. That would be an amazing thing for people to do if they can manage it. Support local whenever you can, because when all this is said and done, our local economy is what it's going to keep us from uh, being a place that you want to live to a place that you don't want to be in. <laughs> so we're yeah. really hoping that downtown thrives. Um, it will, we know it will eventually, but it's going to take a little bit of time and it, it's going to need all of our support to do that. Yeah, I think so. And then for those people that don't have financial resources, um, I, I noticed that you've been doing some great um, posts on your Facebook page and that with regards to other ways that you can support businesses and some of them being just even going online and giving these businesses some great five star reviews um, or, you know, commenting about them, recommending them, sharing their posts, liking their posts. These are all things we can do when we all have a little bit more time online um, to help support businesses as well. And it's not going to cost us anything. Absolutely. Writing great reviews, sharing posts, um, tagging, doing all that sort of thing makes all the difference in the world. And I don't think people realize how much of a difference it makes. And it doesn't cost us anything. It's a great way to support the businesses. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what you're doing. I mean, I know you're a busy lady and, and, and business hasn't stopped from you and you're working from home. But um, what have you been doing to spend the time and just, you know, um, stay safe and, and, and cope with what we're going through? Yeah, so I, we are really busy. Um, the BIA staff is busy working from home. I'm probably working more hours now than I was before, just trying to stay on top of on, on everything that's going on and informing our members doing that, looking at ways we can support our businesses now, but also, you know, what are our plans going to be to support them once this we kind of start coming out of this and, and what we're going to do in order to get people to come back downtown um, to spend their money and spend their time. So we're working on, on plans for now and plans for the future. So, but and 
sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that's really important um, is everybody, I mean, it's really important to stay positive. It's a difficult time, um, but we also need to be realistic and we need to look ahead. And I, I commend you for doing that because we're not just thinking about what's happening now, but what's going to happen when this starts to dissipate and things start to get back to normal. Um, we have to have a plan. And I think that's so important, even as individuals, to have a plan about what we're going to do. And, you know, maybe once travel opens up, we're going to be traveling within Canada and supporting Canadian travel. Um, that's just, you know, those is just one thought out there. But I think um, having that plan is really important for everyone. Yeah, so planning is key. And so we're doing a lot of planning right now. Um, we're doing a lot of communicating right now. And we're just we're just trying to keep up with everything that's going on. I'm watching a lot of TV. I'm going on a lot of news on TV uh, every day, watching the, pre, uh, the prime minister's um, address, the premier's address, um, seeing what's going on in the United States and just kind of getting a general sense of where things are going. So um, on a personal standpoint, I'm just trying to keep um, busy when, when I'm not busy working, um, going out for walks, working in my garden, trying to keep my daughter from going crazy, my 16 year old daughter who's mm -hmm. and my husband, uh, and, you know, worrying a little bit about my son who's living in a different city right now. So, you know, we're, we're, know, and it's um, we're lucky to be living in a place. And I always say, you know, living in Orangeville, we are able to get outside and we, you know, if you live in a house, you can get out, go for a walk. Uh, if you're living in downtown Toronto in a condominium, um, going out for a walk, you know, is a little more challenging because you have to go through a public place in order to get there in an elevator or in a stairwell or in public hallways and doorways. And, you know, it's, it's a health risk just to go outside. We don't have that issue here, which is I'm so grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that we want to stress and we'll always continue to stress, um, and I know everybody hears it and is tired of hearing physical distancing, but it really is important to everyone who's watching um, that you respect other people and we try to do our best to keep everybody safe and healthy. Um, you know, I see more people wearing masks, more, more people wearing gloves, which is great. Um, but there still is that importance of staying within your family unit and staying together with the people that you live with and not inviting more people in. So I think that's really important um, when you're shopping, only shopping one person. Follow the rules and regulations that have been laid out for us so that we can get through this. Um, hopefully a little faster and a little quicker um, and with less sadness than um, some of the other countries that uh, are suffering greatly right now. Yes, absolutely. We're, we all need to do our part. We all need to, to have physical distancing. We say physical versus social because you and I are chatting here together today and, you know, we've been chatting with friends online and doing all that. So I've connected with people I haven't talked to in a really long time just to check in to see how they're doing. And it's been really nice, actually. So in some ways, I think that this is really giving us a wake up call to and making us really realize what's important in our lives uh, and what's um, quite so important. Absolutely. Allison, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to have you on again soon to get an update as to what's going on. But thank you again and stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks very much, Tina. It's always a pleasure. Take care. Welcome to this COVID-19 local update for Rogers TV. My name is Tina Avery, and joining me today is Andy McIntosh, Deputy Mayor of the Town of Orangeville. Andy, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Tina. No problem. It's a pleasure. I know that you're probably a very busy man, and you're dealing with a lot of things, as all of us are, I think, in this very um, unique uh, and unprecedented time. <laughs> um, but I wanted to talk to you with regards to... Um, you know, what type of relief and support the town of Orangeville is providing for its residents and giving us an idea of how um, and how that's going. Okay, um, there's a number of things we did at last council meeting, mainly involving uh, the delay of payment of taxes for people that can't afford to pay them right now. So they, there's no penalties and stuff like that. There was a debate whether we were still going to collect taxes. And if we don't, the town's going to go broke. So what we've done is we've delayed them three months. So, and there's no penalty. So, you know, and saying that, if you can afford to pay, pay taxes, please do. <laughs> we're not asking you to wait three months to pay them. But again, we're trying things like that. We um, donated $10,000 to the food bank in Orangeville just to help them out. It's, uh, yeah, there's so many people, uh, federal, provincially, that are, I don't want to say throwing money at us, but they're giving us money uh, to help the town out. We don't want to double up on that. We want to keep it so everybody gets what they need. 
whether it's provincial, federal, or the local level. Wonderful. Well, let's talk about finding out information. And one of one of my goals in, in, in doing all of these interviews is to, to provide good and current information for everybody in the town of Orangeville and some of the surrounding areas. But let's talk about where residents can find the most updated information about what's really happening in Orangeville. That's an interesting question because we as councillors very often get emails from people and we honestly don't have the answer. <laughs> we have to now get hold of somebody else where that, that person could have just gone. Like I'm, I'm thinking of Kyle Seaback, for example. You know, I don't know how many emails have gone back and forth from people asking me questions and I don't know the answer 100%. So I have to go to someplace else. Um, the three areas that I can think of, number one would be the Town of Orangeville website. Most of the information you need is on www.orangeville.ca. That has pretty well everything you need. Um, there are some things that come out of the blue, some odd questions that we really don't know the answer to. Uh, so you can always get in touch with Sylvia Jones's office. Now, obviously, Sylvia isn't personally going to answer you back, but she has people that can do that sort of thing. So sometimes it's quicker to go to the top than it is to start off with a particular council member. And that way you get a consistent answer. Because most of us, we contact these people, um, whether it be Kyle Seaback or Sylvia Jones, they're the ones we're contacting to get an answer to a lot of your questions. So, you know, I'm not saying go to them first, but if you want a quicker answer, that's the place to go. It's not on orangeville.ca. Wonderful. Um, and so let's talk about some, I mean, these seem like basic questions, but I think that um, my goal is to provide the information and to make people realize the seriousness of what's happening. Um, so how can our community stop the spread of COVID-19? Stay inside. Uh, I cannot believe the amount of people I see driving around. And I, I look at my wife and I say, where would they be going? <laughs> nothing's open. Uh, the grocery stores are open. I don't know how many groceries these people buy, but you know, I see people, the same vehicle driving by my house four or five times within the hour. And I'm just wondering where they're going. Please stay home. The sooner people do that, the sooner this will be over. That's the number one thing that people can do. I think so too. And I mean, there are, there's other rules and regulations that are out there. Um, and, I, and I apologize, you've already heard them and you feel you've heard them enough, but there are some people that may not realize um, that we're trying to stop what's happening here in our community, in our country, in our province, um, so that we're not reaching the levels that maybe other places in the world have reached and are going beyond. And, it, and it's absolutely frightening. So what I'm going to say is when you when you guys are out there and you're going grocery shopping, the, the rule is it's one person from the household that goes to do the shopping. And we're not saying that to the single mother who has a five-year-old. You obviously cannot leave your five-year-old home alone. Um, but for those people that I, even I've seen out um, shopping for sunglasses with teenage daughters and doing whatever, whatever it happens to be, um, stay home, please, and follow the rules and regulations. Um, and I think yeah. that now that the weather's coming, um, people are going to just it's going to be harder and harder to stay indoors um so what i'm asking you is can people just go out for a walk and how, do, how does that work and what should we be doing well we have, we have two dogs and we take them out for a walk every day we just practice social distancing whether you know if there's somebody on the sidewalk we'll go to the road if they don't um we keep six feet away which is what they're recommending and it works out quite good and people aren't offended um, I, I was worried when we first did it a couple of times that people say, oh, you know, well, they think we've got something. They don't. Everybody understands what's going on and that nobody minds. Um, you know, there was one, there was a lady on one side of the street with a dog. There was us on the other side of the street with two dogs. And there was somebody on the sidewalk with a dog. And it just seemed like the most natural thing in the world. So, yes, by all means, get out there, sit in your backyard, get some fresh air, do whatever you can. Absolutely, and I think I think the point is is when you're physically distancing from somebody, um, we want to make sure you're not socially distancing yourselves as well. I mean, socially, we want you to be social, but you have to follow the rules. Um, you know, you can be in your backyard, and your neighbors could be in their backyard, and you could be having a barbecue, but you're nowhere near each other, um, and you're staying under the limit of five people. 
um, and you're doing these things and being respectful, um, there's no reason why you can't talk to the person who's walking the dog across the street on the other sidewalk or, you know, on their driveway as you walk past and you are far enough distance. You can still... Um, you can still reach out to people. And I think that's really important. So how, how, do, how else do you think we can um, support those people who are number one, self-isolated because they may have symptoms, they may live on their own, um, or maybe they're a senior and they, they, they don't want to take that chance of going out. How as a community can we help those people? Because it's very hard to be by yourself. It is. And um, there's a number of, of groups out there that are helping out. Uh, if you have an elderly neighbor, just phone them. If, if you have relatives, just phone them. Uh, I know my mother, for example, is stuck in the Lord Dufferin. And uh, every time I phone her, she's complaining about, I can't do this, I can't do that. I said, well, <laughs> guess what? I can't either. So <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. But for people that are single and on their own and self-isolating, reach out. Um, somebody will always help you. Uh, Councillor Lisa Post picked up my medication for me at uh, Sobeys. I wasn't going in there. So she volunteered. She went in there and picked it up and dropped it off at my doorstep. So everybody's helping everybody. And again, reach out to these people both ways. Not only you, but, you know, people that need help. Please, please reach out. I, you know, and if this is that time that if you're living around people and you know that there's somebody living on their own or there's seniors, this is the time to offer to do it. I'm not asking anyone to put themselves at risk in any way, shape or form. Um, sometimes it's an email. Sometimes it's a text. Sometimes you could drop a letter off in their mailbox, just as an effect outside of the envelope. Whatever it happens to be, um, yeah. is now is the time for us to strengthen ourselves as a community. We already are a wonderful community um, and I think that it's really important that we follow the rules but not forget about those people that that uh, maybe don't have a family in their home with them to help pass the time. Absolutely and again I implore those people can also reach out to other people. Uh, nobody's going to turn yeah. them away. You know if you need something reach out to them. I can't emphasize that enough because I've heard horror stories of people have stayed in the house for three weeks and not spoken to anybody and they've gone hungry and stuff like that. Don't be one of those. Reach out to somebody. Absolutely. And you know what? And I think there's a lot of us out there that are on social media, some, some people who are not, but the telephone's still a working, still a working technology. Absolutely. Um, if, if you are struggling with whether it's food, whatever, financially, whatever, there are people you need to mm. reach out to and make sure that you're getting all of that information, which is yes. why we're doing these um, these talks so that people find the uh, find a way to get a hold of people. Just uh, um, a question that so I've mm. seen pop up. Is public transit still running in Orangeville? Yes, it is. Um, there's been a lot of debate about this, but it is an essential service. Uh, we've taken some precautions. Uh, by the way, transit is completely free. That was one of the things council did. That saves the driver having to handle any money or even having to have contact with the passengers. They have to enter in the back. Um, everything is sanitized regularly and we're trying to keep it open. A lot of people wanted us to shut it down, but public transportation is for the most vulnerable people in our community and we can't just shut it down. It's got to stay open. Yeah, and I, I can totally understand that for sure. Um, and I know um, you had mentioned earlier that you had donated money to the Orangeville Food Bank, which is now working as Dufferin Food Share. So tell us a little bit more about what's what's going on with the well, town. And as far as the Dufferin Food Share, what a great idea. Put everything together. Um, I know Heather Hayes personally, and uh, she's doing a heck of a job there. Uh, we've got, again, we've got the provincial government helping out, the federal government helping out, and the town helping out. So hopefully... With all these people helping out, um, both financially and in some cases physically, they're going to do all right, I hope. And again, it's one of those things, if you're having trouble, please reach out to them. There's no shame in doing that. No, because we're all in an unprecedented time, um, and there's a lot of people that, you know, just assume they'd still be working now, and they're not. Um, and. I think it's really important and I, and I, and I, there's no, as you said, there's no shame and there's no, there's nothing wrong with reaching out for help because we are a community and we are a fantastic community. Um, and I think it's just really important that people realize that. Um, so Andy, tell me, what are you doing um, 
with regards to being at home? How are you coping? What kind of tips can you give all of us? What you might be doing that, so that you can stay sane and, and cheerful and positive because I think that's really important right now. Yeah, um, you are correct. I am staying home 99% of the time <laughs> other than getting my groceries. And like I say, I order them online and um, we just pick them up. Uh, I read a lot of books. I uh, have an account with the library, which is a great resource. Um, and you can sign up free at the library now online. Uh, so I'm doing a lot of book reading, which I didn't used to do. On days like this, you might find me sitting in the backyard if I get a chance. Or I might be talking to somebody exactly as I am with you. Um, tonight we have another council meeting. Last week we had a council a county council meeting. So we'll keep. I'm keeping busy. I'm keeping busy. That is absolutely wonderful. Well, Andy, I want to thank you so much for joining me today and sharing this information and hopefully we can reach out again and touch base soon and, and updates and, um, and hopefully the flip side of this isn't too far away. Yes, hopefully. And, and as you mentioned before, a lot of older people, they don't have access to the internet, but they do watch Roger's cable. So good for you guys. <laughs> Well, thank you. I mean, it's it's just a way um, to provide good information, and I think that's that's really important um, because not everybody is on social media, um, and the more information we can get out there about keeping everybody safe and healthy, um, the more of us there will be on that flip side when all of this is said and done. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you again for taking out the time to speak with us, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Say, say, stay safe and healthy. <laughs> will do. Talk to you later. Welcome to this COVID-19 local update for Rogers TV. My name is Tina Avery and joining me today is David Nairn, Artistic Director for Theatre Orangeville. David, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Tina. Hi, are you, are you safe? Are you happy? Are you healthy? I am, I am. I hope Good. you are as well. I am. That's all that matters, right? That's all that, that's all that matters is that everybody's safe and healthy. That is really, really important. And I think that's part of why we're doing what we're doing here at Rogers and trying to get out the information. And so making sure that we're, we're talking about the fun stuff and the joyful stuff, and, but still talking about the importance of remaining safe and healthy. And the more we do, as a, do that individually, the more our community will flip onto the flip side and we'll all be a lot healthier and, uh, and happy and ready to go when this is all done. Absolutely. It's, you know, all of us, well, myself, I, you know, everybody, um, just I want to give a big shout out to all of our, all those frontline heroes uh, in our community that are, that are keeping us healthy and safe and fed and out of harm's way by putting themselves in harm's way. And uh, I don't think I could be prouder of any community. And when this is said and done, and it will be said and done, um, those folks are, those are going to be our heroes. Those are our, these are, these are our new heroes. Um, yeah. I hope everybody uh, just says a big thank you when we're when the all clear is sounded and we can all go into a grocery store to, you know, and shot just to just say to whoever's on the cash or thank you for being there when I needed you when we needed you as a community. It's, uh, it's beyond yeah. measure. Everybody's uh, it's just it's it's so wonderful to see. And even the global community, you know, we're, we're all coming together in so many ways. It's there's so much creativity happening now. And I'm like everybody else. I'm just, I'm blown away by what local artists, uh, performing artists particularly, are doing to uh, express themselves artistically and share their gifts, their God-given gifts and talents um, with the community and with the global community. It's, it's so wonderful that we're able to communicate this way and still uh, uh, we can physically distance, but not socially distance, which I think is a really important distinction to be made as well, that we're talking to one another, albeit not in the same room, but that day will come soon. Uh, hopefully yeah. Sooner than later. Well, let's start off and talk about how COVID-19 has affected 
Theater Orangeville. Um, we're aware that uh, obviously there are no gatherings and, and public buildings are closed, but let's talk about Theater Orangeville for a little bit and how it's been affected. Yeah, well, uh, obviously, as you say, the, the theater is closed. The town of Orangeville uh, closed the Opera House, rightly so, with our complete support. Uh, our, our last production of Too Close to Home uh, opened and closed on the same night, um, on Friday the 13th, which is usually my lucky day. Um, but uh, the actors were super understanding. I, I mean, how could you not? But it's not everyone who can say that they that they opened and closed on Broadway on the same night. So um, uh, that's got a certain a certain ring to it somehow. Um, the last show of the season, uh, New Canadian Curling Club, we have postponed uh, until August. We were able to move it out. Uh, so, you know, God willing that uh, we'll all be able to congregate again by that time. If we can, great. If we can't, well, then we'll all be back together hopefully in the fall with some great stuff. Uh, we've postponed everything. Nothing is cancelled. So if you had tickets to any event or anything that's happening through us, we will, of course, those those events will be will be uh, postponed. Uh, Lisa Ways Across the Pond and uh, our creative partners on stage shows. We have two of them uh, that were right in the in the final throes of rehearsal. There goes the neighborhood and Big Top Flop, both of which are going to be terrific shows. And those shows will happen as soon as we are all able to gather again. And audiences uh, are supportive of that. Everyone, of course, is understanding. Um, uh, it's it's disheartening, of course, to see things like the blues and jazz that are not being done. But these are spectacular events. It's so it's, it's you know it's really beyond theater Orangeville, Tina. It's it's the entire arts community, uh, like the blues and jazz, or great events like Riv Fest with the Rotary Club or whatever. You know those events will be back next year, bigger, stronger, um, and uh, and the the entire art scene here is really a, is taking such a such a lead because. You know, the, the arts are what's keeping all of us sane right now. You know, uh, performing arts in my instance particularly, but but uh, I'm enjoying every day, I'm watching Patrick Stewart, who is reading a sonnet, a Shakespeare sonnet every day. Dolly Parton is reading bedtime stories for children. Locally, artists are doing great things. And, and you know, whether you're, whether you're watching Netflix or you're reading a novel or, or maybe writing a novel, <laughs> I, hope you're, I hope you're doing something creative like that. You know, I, I promised myself just the other day that I am finally, 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 I have no excuses not to sit down and finally learn to play the ukulele, which I'm bound and determined to do. So maybe <laughs> one day I'll play the ukulele and you can tap dance and we'll sing, we'll do like Jolene. That's the only song I'm working on right now. Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Um, so, that's, yeah. that would be a sight to be seen. I will say that. It I, certainly I, I, would. I, 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 yeah. Having made that promise, I know I'm going to, I'm going to live to regret it, but, um, that's the great thing is that we'll all be there to, to cash in on those markers. So that's what's happening with the theater. Um, so what, uh, and what other, sorry, what, and sorry, what other you? ways, in what other ways are your, is the team at Theater Orangeville working to keep the arts alive? Well, I mean, we're all like everybody, or like a lot of folks. We're um, we're able to work remotely. Uh, it's a little more challenging when it comes to the building of sets and things because that's not happening. But we're still moving the organization forward. There's lots of planning to be done for next year. There's a brochure to be put together. There's a a marketing and advertising campaign uh, subscription. You know, all of that will roll out in due course and in due time. Uh, all of it, of course, everything that we do is is, um, and rightly so, is determined for us by the Department of Public Health and uh, civil authorities, the municipal, uh, the town of Orangeville. You know, we, we're taking the lead from all of those folks, as all of us must. And um, so we're working forward. Um, there's a lot, of, as you know, there's always a lot of planning to putting a season together. Uh, we're talking about actors and directors. You know, we have to, you know, we're, we're, uh, we have joy in our hearts. These are trying and anxious times. But um, the great thing, you know, maybe it's, we all need to have joy in our hearts. We all need to have the, uh, the longing for something, the thirst. I think people have a thirst for storytelling. They have a, we know good stories from bad stories. We love telling stories and love hearing stories. And that's what we do. At Theatre Orangeville and, and any arts organization really does that. And so we're working so that when, as I said, when the all clear is sounded, we Theatre Orange will Theatre Orangeville will be there for this community. Um, and uh, so that we can all celebrate joyously uh, who and what we are. And, and I think I've, I've uh, your social media um, aspects of it, um, sharing all different aspects of the art. Well, yeah, we're, so what we're doing uh, with our social media is um, 
we're you know we're we're we we provide entertainment, and so we're looking to uh, we've got great links to uh, the Paris Opera, to an Elton John concert, to uh, we're doing fun things every Friday. We're releasing the Theatre Orangeville um, physical distancing playlist. So because uh, we meet daily, uh, staff meet daily. Um, via this technology and uh so we all suggest a, a song and and uh they file i because i don't understand the tech of it all but all you need to do is click on it and it will take you to a playlist there's usually 16 17 18 songs there are really as as we are an eclectic group of creative people it is a very collective creative list of songs uh, i tend to be the if you see songs by you know bobby darren and frank sinatra those tend to be me but um it's, it's a really, we're doing word searches. We're doing all kinds of stuff. We're going to be doing some, some online recipe exchanging. So we're just trying to keep people, keep joy in people's hearts. Those are the kind of things that we're looking to do. Um, and what uh, ways can the participate in the social media aspect? Sorry, Tina, you just broke up on me a little bit there. In what ways can the community participate in the social media aspect of it? Well, please, you know, first, well, I mean, you know, post, if you've got, if, if artists, if uh, actors, singers, musicians, whoever, if you're creating work, please let us know. Post it. Post your work. We will we will hook up with you on Facebook. We will share it. We will like it. We will do all of that. Um, if your if your kids are putting on a play in the backyard, please, if you've got a video of it that you feel like sharing, that you're comfortable with sharing, send it to us. Or you know, we will. We want to celebrate the community. We want to celebrate what people are doing creative in the community. And if we can like it, share it, link to it, we will certainly do that um, because it's important that we that we keep these creative ideas flowing flowing in the community. Um, yeah. And I so, you know, so. we'd like to do that. I mean, I, I've reached, I was starting to reach out to people with a weekly sort of update uh, because not all people are social media savvy or, uh, or quite frankly, they're on Facebook or, or some of these things that we use. So we're going to send out a weekly uh, email as well that will provide links so that people can can go to those uh, can go to those events can go to our playlist. Uh, if you've got a if you're uh, if you've got a tune that you'd like to see on the list or if you've got a recipe that you want to share with us of some wonderful great dish that you've discovered in these times of self isolation that you want to share, let us know and we will. We just want to, we want to keep that social arts kind of network going. That's what we're that's what we're up to. <laughs> I think that's really important. I think that's wonderful, David. I think that all of these viewers that are out there, if you're doing anything, and it doesn't have to be arts related, but if it is even better, um, just send in some pictures to Theatre Orange Real, post it on their page, see what they can do to help you. It could be you you as a family watching a Broadway show um, you know, on your television. Just It can just be a picture of the back of heads. You don't necessarily need to show your family. You can do whatever you want. And I think that's absolutely oh, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Absolutely, and maybe, you know, only things that you're comfortable showing or we're comfortable we can do. But I'm sure it'll all be great. But yeah, any sort of fun activity like that, because those are the those are the really special and joyous things that that are worth celebrating. Um, because those are the kind of things that we try to celebrate uh, with youth programs and and all of those kind of things. So yeah, please share, share, share. That's that's the message I think. Um, all right, David. So tell us to give us some tips on how you're spending your time um, within your family unit and, and staying safe and healthy. Well, we're we're doing a number of things. Of course, we're we're staying indoors. We're we're self isolating. Uh, I guess at my age, I need to be careful about these things. Of course, we all do. Uh, we get out. You know, we're walking daily. Lisa is uh, my wife has um, is doing has is recreating a lot of her late mother's fantastic baking so i'm gonna need to go on a serious diet um but we're doing that uh, of course i'm you know working usually every morning you know for three or four hours i'm on on this kind of media or this medium and we're communicating as an organization so there's there's a lot of work still to be done as as a good many people are working from home it's not it's not holiday time um trying to be careful about how much of that time I'm allowed to dedicate to that and other things, reading, uh, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately that have been, you know, uh, piling up that I haven't gotten to for um, for forever. And um, and so that's fun, too, uh, doing some cooking. Uh, I've, I've heard you're an avid gardener. Uh, sorry? I've heard that you're an avid gardener. Yeah, well, you know, again, and also there's something, I mean, you know, we have this beautiful yard and, and we've 
every year kind of do the basics because there just never seems to be time, right? That's always the big thing. I don't have time. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. So now I'm just being, I'm trying to be a lot more careful about how I manage my time and how I use my time and use it wisely. And part of that now is about, you know, getting out in the garden and doing the stuff, that cleaning up from what I should have done last fall, but didn't um, because there was no time. So now there's, now there's time. But it's good time. You know, it's not just about putting in time or killing time. I hate those kind of expressions about killing time. Time is too precious and it's too precious a thing for all of us. So um, I think even, you know, resting, reading, I mean, just reach. It's a time of recharging. It's a time to to it's it's a time to reflect on lifestyle, because I think the world will be a changed place. And I think that the arts and how we how we how we gather sometimes will probably change. Um, we'll cha- I'm, not, I'm not saying for the better or worse, they'll just change, so. David, I wanna thank you so much for spending oh, yeah. this precious all of us, we are done, uh, but stay safe and stay healthy and uh, we'll, we'll see you very soon in, in the theater. We'll see everybody soon. Be well, stay safe, be happy.